Hey everybody, this is Jeff from Building a Corn Workshop, and today's episode is on one of my favorite fish. Uh, it's an African cichlid out of Lake Tanganyika, and it is from the genus Lepidio Lamprologus, and it is Lepidio Lamprologus kendalli, um, which is also synonymous with uh, Lepidio Lamprologus incombe. This genus has about, I think, 11 species now, and uh, it is a predatory species. These are predatory fish. Uh, very, very cool fish, as you'll see. If you're a cichlid fan, then you probably, if you, uh, a lot of people know of the pike cichlid, which is a New World cichlid, and it's a, it's like a torpedo. This is, this is kind of like the cousin to that fish. So, uh, except that it's got a rocky pattern. So, a very, very cool pattern. And this fish, this fish lives in relatively shallow waters in the southern part of the lake. It gets about six to eight inches, and so we'll go over the parameters with you, but I really want to show you this fish. I have it here. I have a juvenile here. We, I got it a month ago at about two inches. It's already grown. Uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch. Uh, I think it's about two and a half inches now. And it is right here in this tank, and it is dominating the tank. Um, and if you look at this fish, you'll see why I love this fish so much. Now this fish, we've had about a month. In the beginning, there is another Lepidio Lamprologus in here. It's an Attenuatus. And it it was challenging him the very first day after that he pretty much took over and by the third day he ruled the tank uh, and as you can see it's a very strong powerful fish uh, it's, it's carnivore uh, they eat mainly fish in the aquarium uh, we can you know we feed them uh, I feed them a variety of meat uh, he gets not just brine shrimp but uh, they're you know good to go for mice shrimp he doesn't I do not feed him live fish in the past when I had him in the mid 90s I've fed them small guppies um, and like I said these fish get about six to eight inches now typical Tanganyikan fish so you want to keep them pH above let me give you the stats get you want to keep the pH above eight and a half the you want to, the degrees of hardness you want it to be about eight degrees of hardness or above somewhere between eight and fourteen uh, high 70s is perfect so 77 to 79 is perfect for these fish Lake Tanganyika doesn't vary, doesn't vary the temperature very much these and of course if you want to breed them typically most cichlids including these would be low 80s would be perfect and in the mid 90s I had a pair of these uh, fish I, I bought three again it's even smaller than this they were probably an inch each and I got lucky with a pair and these guys like to uh, breed in a dark cave with a small opening so I used a clay pot back then I was able to get the pair got babies to the swimming fry stage but they didn't make it. Um, it was a show tank like this. It had more fish in it. And so uh, eventually the babies were probably going to get picked off uh, by other fish. But I can tell you this, the this fish is, uh, you know, very, very aggressive. Um, seem, they seem pretty mellow compared to a lot of other fish. But as far as Tanganyikans go, as you can see, uh, the other fish that are in here, he keeps them on the left-hand side of the tank. I'll zoom out for you. On the right-hand side of the tank, there is his home and he has dug i'm going to show you over here how much he's dug up and so he doesn't let anybody come over here at night he's sleeping a lot of times under this big piece of slate he's carved out but sometimes i did see him over here in the back side of it he likes to go underneath it there you see him he's like hey what are you doing in my space that's how territorial this guy is A beautiful fish um they get a lot of blue in the face um, first time i came across this fish was 1985 at a uh, above all things Southern California where I lived and there was a doctor who in Laguna Niguel had a garage converted with a bunch of aquariums in it filled with aquariums mainly Tanganyika and cichlids that's all I remember and he had probably a 20 long and he had a full grown in Kambe or Kendalai and it was probably eight inches it seemed that that big they, they say they get around six to eight inches females slightly smaller can't really tell the sex other than the size when they're full grown. Uh, so if you're going to breed them, they recommend that you get several of them, probably at least six of them, to try to get a pair. Uh, they do get pretty territorial, as most fish do when they're breeding. Um, and I did notate that in the mid-90s when I had my pair. Uh, you know, they chase anything in the region. And you see this guy's very aggressive. Even the cylindricus, who's pretty aggressive, he chases him around, uh, Tritocephalus that's up there. And again, these fish are all small. Uh, he is the biggest one, and he's growing really, really fast. Uh, the, the Kelvis there, the Attenuatus, he, he's, he rules the whole roost. 
and uh, surprisingly. Now, there are lots of other African cichlids that are a lot more aggressive, but as far as in my tank, uh, he is the most aggressive fish uh, because he is the biggest, but also just the type of fish he is. And I've seen a lot of Lamprologenes who are very aggressive, including like a Lamprologus bucheri, things like that. There are a lot of fish out there that are very aggressive. Some are just really aggressive towards each other, and sometimes they're very aggressive towards other fish. But most of the time, cichlids, there's going to be an alpha male. There's going to be a dominant fish in the tank. And so that's this guy right here. But luckily the fish, he, you can see he doesn't really chase them that much. Every now and then he lets them eat. He doesn't keep them in a corner. The only fish that stays high is the Tritocephalus, and that's because of the Lamprologus cylindricus. Uh, doesn't like him. He's another striped fish. When he sees another striped fish, he drives him crazy, so he likes to keep him high up. But but the Kendall eye here, and that's what I ordered him under, uh, under a Kendall eye. Uh, and again, going back to that Kendall eye in Kambe uh, controversy, uh, the in that's the same fish. The Inkambe comes from the Inkambe Bay uh, region. And uh, other than that, genetics haven't proved much. Perhaps uh, the fish had bred with another Lamprologene um, and uh, then bred with itself again. So it, it is the same fish, though, as far as, uh, I guess, when it comes to testing um, genetics, nuclear DNA, things like that. I don't get into that kind of stuff. I'm not, I, I'm not a scientist, uh, taxonomist, nothing like that. But I really love fish. I'm just a hobbyist. And so for me, this is one of my favorite fish. And as he grows, we'll we'll do more videos as he gets bigger. It's really, really cool. And um, yeah, if you watch them, these guys are really strong. They're really super fast. You got to keep a tight lid on them, otherwise they'll jump out uh, if they get startled or if they're chasing another fish, uh, like another uh, candle eye. You know, they'll they'll chase them out of the tank. Um, <clears throat> you need at least a four foot tank. This is a seventy five gallon, so you need at least a four foot tank to keep them, keep them happy. And as you see how aggressive they are, uh, anything smaller than that, you probably have fish up in the corner. Uh, so this is the fish. I'm going to try to get some better shots for you, closer shots. Um, but, you know, this fish is really, really cool. And I just wanted to go ahead and highlight it as I will highlight some of the other fish. Uh, there's a good view of them finally uh, before he runs off. But like I said, uh, they dart. It's amazing if you throw in food, how fast they shoot across the cram to grab it. Um, very greedy eater. He will eat anything. So far, when it comes to flake, dry foods, frozen foods, pellet, flake, he doesn't care. He just wants to eat. So that's a good that's good news uh, in a way because you get a lot of fish that are fickle. The other Lepidio Lamprologus attenuatus in this tank is more fickle. He, at the beginning, really didn't like dry food, especially flake food. <clears throat> and didn't want anything to do with the pellet either. So he was like, no, give me the frozen food, give me brine shrimp, things like that. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's it. That's our episode. As he grows, we'll do a follow-up episode. Love to see him in a much bigger size. So there's a good look at Lepidio Lamprologus kendalli right there. If you enjoyed the video, hit a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please, please subscribe to Build an Aquarium Workshop. This is what we're all about. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.